slow. <laughs> Let me crack open one of these. Oh, why does this taste like cherry chocolate? I don't know why. It tastes like cherry chocolate. Hello, how's it going everybody? Today we're gonna be doing an anti-haul because I haven't done one in far too long. It's been far too long since I've done one. And there's been some products that have come out recently that I feel like roasting and just in, in talking about in general. Anyway, how's everybody doing? How are you doing? How's everyone? Everybody doing good? I put fake freckles on today and I like it. Fake freckles, some blush all over my face. I got a new nose ring that has like a double hoop. I'm wearing my Jujutsu Kaisen t-shirt because the new season started the other day. I wore it to work and my boss was like, oh, is that a boy band? And I'm like, no, they're from a TV show. And then he went off on a tangent and I was like, okay, whatever. Hi, we're gonna do an anti-haul today. If you're new here and haven't seen one of these before, I've done like 58 of them, I think at this point. Uh, I started doing them years ago, originally popularized by Kimberly Clark. And we're just gonna talk about some products and, and kind of roast them because I actually have seen things recently that I'm like, huh? What? Why is this? Why does this exist? Even though I haven't been really been paying attention to new things recently, cause I've just kind of like checked out of makeup stuff a lot. I, I've, I've formed a new special interest <laughs> as of late and also the Sims. Yeah, let's jump into some products and things. I, let me open up my, let me look it up, uh, open my saved file. Hello, saved, thank you. So the first thing, <laughs> kind of confused me because someone sent this to me on uh on twitter and uh the the text of it was mayonnaise in a lip balm container and i was like excuse me what <laughs> mayonnaise in a lip balm container and it turns out that craft craft has put out a lip balm sized or a lip balm that's specific to go with their buffalo dressing mayonnaise it's so easy to, ex this article is like, it's so easy to accessorize with your favorite spicy condiments these days. First, there's fancy hot sauce necklace, and now comes a spiffy lip balm shaped container from Kraft that holds the brand's mayo buffalo dressing. So their logic was that because everybody needs a little bit of buffalo sauce, buffalo mayonnaise to take with them anywhere. So let's just put it in a lip balm container because everybody carries around lip balm. What? Huh? Why? First of all, I do carry lip balms around. I carry many of them. There's one sitting right here actually, which is in kind of the same shape as the Buffalo dressing container, which is my first gripe with it. Why in on God's green earth would I want something in my purse that looks and feels like a lip balm, but then when I go to put it on, it's fucking Buffalo mayonnaise. What? I, my sister would carry around Cholula with her at times. She would just have like hot sauce in her car. <laughs> so her top of Dio. We've done this before, but this is the weirdest little gimmick of like a mixture of makeup stuff, makeup collabs, and then food. Usually you end up having food themes around makeup products. So like peach stuff. Cause I guess Too Faced is coming up with more peach things. Chocolate, cinnamon, pumpkin spice. Uh, there's all these other flavors and foods that have been kind of infused into themes of makeup. The, I, I never would have thought that I would have seen the other way around where it's like, hey, there's like makeup theme, like a makeup delivery packet for your food. What? It's a reusable container that looks like lip balm. And it says Buffalo Balm, Craft Buffalo Balm. I just imagine, imagine being at a restaurant Okay, imagine going to a restaurant and ordering some French fries. They get you some ketchup or they're out of something and you're like, oh, I want this sauce. Imagine sitting inside a restaurant, pulling this out of your purse and squirting it on your, your that was a, and, and squeezing it out. <laughs> Squirt's not the right word. Squeezing out the buffalo sauce from your lip balm tube. Imagine doing that at an actual restaurant and like having somebody see you when they walk by like walking by your table and you're just, here's me just like squeezing lip balm, which it's not actual lip balm, but it looks that way. Like what? <laughs> Who is in that much of a need for Buffalo style ranch or Buffalo mayonnaise dressing? Who isn't that much of a need for it that they need it in a teeny tiny little lip balm? Also, that doesn't even hold that much. And if you're like my boyfriend, he likes a lot of sauce. This is maybe like two uses of lip balm. There's not a lot in here. 
Looking at the image, that's not a lot of sauce. Are you gonna have to refill your little lip balm sauce like all the time? I, I'm just, I'm baffled by the entire thing. And it's so hilarious because it's so stupid. I don't need that and I'm not gonna buy it, obviously. Ugh. Next, this looks like a collaboration that was created by AI. And that's gonna be a running theme with a lot of things I feel like going forward. It's just like they feed, they feed colors and like general foods into chat GPT and then it pops out a collab. Um, but Too Faced is doing a collaboration with Pop-Tarts. And the only time I've thought about Pop-Tarts recently was when I was trying to figure out what the Grimace shake tasted like and it tastes like Wildberry Pop-Tarts or Raspberry Cream Savers, one of the two. But Too Faced has these two little palettes that are $27, eight pan, it's a decent price for a pan, but it's frosted strawberry and brown sugar cinnamon. And can you guess what the color schemes are? Wow, rosy pinks and neutral browns, revolutionary. Honest to God, Too Faced has to have just a bunch of the same colors in bulk. If I did, if I did a deep dive, I feel like this, somebody needs to do this. I do not have the um, capacity for making spreadsheets in Excel to accomplish this. I do not have the Jenny Nicholson level uh, or, or Mike's Mike level of analysis of things to really do this. But I feel like Too Faced just has the same colors that they just mix up in different variations and then they find foods that kind of look like it. It's like they take just a handful of eyeshadows and throw it on the table like a dice game. And then they're like, oh, this is what's gonna be in this one. And then they find a food or a thing that like actually matches it. It's so boring and it's seen, we've seen it like 8 million times. I don't need it. The frosted strawberry, does it smell like frosted strawberry? Does it smell like brown sugar cinnamon? I would argue that frosted blueberry is better than frosted strawberry, but that's just me. Brown sugar cinnamon is uh, one of the best flavors. So if they were picking good flavors, they got at least one of the two best um, correct. I know that people are probably gonna argue and say that strawberry is better than blueberry, but imagine a frosted blueberry palette, like blues and browns. That would have been pretty. Mixing like the blues and like the, why didn't they do that? No, because they have too many pink eyeshadows that they need to get rid of. Oh my God, Too Faced, it's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> God. Those are two of the things that people gave me. And then the other thing that people suggested to me was the new She Glam palettes. Uh, and they're, they're vinyl pop eyeshadow palettes. And if you didn't know, She Glam is uh, Shein's makeup brand. So we've talked about Shein recently. Thanks for the nice stuff on that video. Um, I really appreciate it. It's Shein's makeup brand. So it, 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 it all the same things, problems that I have with She and I have with She Glam. So I won't reiterate those because I would just be repeating myself. And if you'd like to go watch that video, I'll leave it in a link below. These are very inexpensive. Uh, they're very cheap. They're $7.49. Except one of them is $7.99. Why? Why is one 50 cents more? But it's inspired by CD players of the past. These palettes will take you on a trip down memory lane with metallic foils, frosty shimmers, bold mattes, and more. Now, I will say, lenticular effect packaging? Really? Is it lenticular? Do they have lenticular packaging? I don't see lenticular packaging there. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. What? I can't tell. But the packaging, not the worst thing I've ever seen. These palettes look a little bit confusing because they say color palette, vinyl pop color palette. And there's easily, you can tell that there are creams and powders in here. Um, they have a pressed glitter, which I don't really have a problem with so much, but when there's creams and powders mixed with the things, I'm not sure like what these palettes are for, like what goes where, like, is that a base? Is the, is the cream color like a base? Is it a lip balm? What is it? Is it, is it a cheek product? It's confusing what it's supposed to be. However, the biggest problem that I have with this is when they talk about like the 2000s nostalgia of like CD players. If you want to make a CD player themed eyeshadow palette that's supposed to be reminiscent of the early 2000s nostalgia, you better go way harder than this. That is like, I would buy a really well done, like looking like the CD players, the ones that were so big and bulky that you like kind of fit it in your back pocket and it 
kind of stuck out. It was like metallic on the outside. It had like a little baby window and then it had like the little, this is not what those looked like. These are too chic for that. If you want to have a whole thing, a whole collection themed around CDs from like the early 2000s, make something that looks like hit clips. Like this is not it. This is not, this is not early 2000s nostalgia. This is not what that was. Y2K makeup? No, just because it's a CD, just because there's a, a donut shaped thing on the outside. I want it to be functional. I want it to be round. I want it to be round. I want it to open like a poly pocket, like a CD player. And then maybe to play play music, that would be hilarious. But yeah, how funny would that be? Have like an eyeshadow palette with like a hit clip type accessory to go with it that just plays like a song. Remember hit clips? Probably many of you don't. They were literally teeny tiny little, they looked like little Walkman, but they were tiny and literally you could clip them in your hair, but you're supposed to clip them like on your pants, on your belt, and you could play like one song, like one song. I would buy that. But these, they look boring. I'm confused of what the colors are supposed to be for. The colors, some of them make sense together. Some of them don't. Why? Why? Don't need it, not gonna buy it. Okay, next. Next, we're gonna talk about James Charles's new collection, Painted. And I heard about this a little while back and that's kind of what made me want to do another anti-haul uh, because I was like, no, I, I don't need this. I don't want any of it. And it's frustrating to see that James is still succeeding all after all the things that he did and after everything that's come out about James Charles as a person. So it's annoying that people still want to make products with him. Right before the actual product was supposed to be launched, he posted this video of like going and like trying out the final formula and like trying it out and, and showing people the process and whatever. And he said that, oh, the formula wasn't right. It was like cracking. It wasn't, it wasn't working the way it was supposed to. It wasn't working the way that he had like designed it. And so they had to go through a bunch of process of, of remixing things and remaking stuff. And he said it was like two, like two to three weeks before the launch of the actual like stuff, like the actual product launch. And all I can think is that like, don't you need more time to like make all of the products if if two or three weeks before you're actually finalizing the formula don't you need more time to make the products before you start selling them like that feels like a very very narrow timeline and a very convenient timeline to get people to want to go buy it more because they're like oh my god well james showed us he was so transparent with us and showed us the process i think it was a total gimmick to get people to buy more i think it was it was a sad attempt at at drumming up controversy that really wasn't much of a controversy uh, to get people to talk about it more because I really haven't been seeing people talk about him as much. So yeah, um, I'm obviously not gonna buy any of this stuff. It's also not really revolutionary, like him talking about it again as this like amazing, miraculous like thing that nobody's ever done. And it's like, okay, you, okay, you made face paint. And the other thing too, like when he shared the original uh, thing or like when he shared the announcement, four years of hard work later, my own makeup brand is finally coming. I'm beyond excited to share these products with you, but for now, here's a teaser of what to come. Four years and you were still finalizing the product formula two to three weeks before it was supposed to be launched. I call bullshit personally. So if you needed another reason to not buy anything from James Charles, besides the fact that it's just James Charles, um, Maybe this will give you another reason. And I just needed to talk about it. Cause I'm like, bitch, what, what are you talking about? Two to three weeks for me. No, that is too conveniently timed. I do not buy it. I call bullshit. I do not need it and I'm not going to buy it. Honestly, this looks like a lot of stuff that like Danessa Myricks already has. So like go buy it from Danessa Myricks. Just saying, yeah, don't need it. Next, this is something that I know it's like far gone, long gone. Nobody probably cares about it anymore, but I, full transparency, I am not really on the makeup side of TikTok. Most of the things that I see on my TikTok page are either about dogs or about, um, there's a lady who I follow who has a hearse and she's very cool. She's like a cool goth girl with a hearse that she drives around. Who else do I follow? I follow some cosplayers. I follow a lot of food accounts. I follow, and then just like silly people. I'm not on makeup TikTok. So like, I never get Michaela's videos. I get videos making fun of Michaela sometimes. Like I've gotten a handful of those videos where it uses the Kim Kardashian sound and I quickly scroll through. I didn't realize that like, she was doing this whole series of like 
pick my wedding foundation for the last like year and like going through different foundations and like brands were sending her foundations to try specifically so she could like pick her fate her best one for her wedding which like i get i get monetizing aspects of you preparing for a big event like that because it costs a lot of money to do weddings are expensive so i get monetize like making content about it to recoup some of your money back totally get that but the fact that she was kind of like getting products sent specifically to her for that purpose alone. And then I guess by her statement said that she reached out to Elf about wanting to create her perfect lip duo, lip lip color duo for her wedding day, which again, I don't really buy. I don't necessarily buy that it was like a very organic type of situation, but I don't really, I, I have no reason to trust this woman because she has already lied multiple times about things. So I don't really have a reason to trust her because I didn't have any skin in the game before. I never watched her before. I never built up a trust with her before she betrayed people's trust. I saw a bunch of stuff about her wedding and how these like influencers were posting get ready with me's to go to her wedding. It felt very brand trip, influencer brand trip turn like her, it's like she turned her own wedding into an influencer brand trip, which feels so weird to me. Monetizing, like she it was like sponsored by Elf, which again, I, I want to say get your bag, but like at what point is it not about you, your husband and your family? And is it more about what you can get from it and what other people can get from it. Um, it felt very inauthentic. The people that said they were going to her wedding didn't know her very well, but it was just as somebody who's like photographed weddings for years, um, the whole thing kind of grossed me out. I was like, this is weird. I don't like this. Like, I don't, I don't know. This is weird. And also the lip color is like not my thing. It's way too light. I wouldn't wear it. I wouldn't buy it. Marriage material lip duo. It's, it's, it's giving very early 2000s Mac nude color. Colors. It's very washed out. It's very pale. It's not a color that I would vibe with. It would wash me out. I feel like it washed her out personally. Am I being a hater? I don't know. Sometimes I just want to be a hater. I don't know. But she was saying that it sold out in 18 minutes. Like, it, I don't know. It just feels very... Maybe I just don't trust people very easily anymore. I've just like lost a lot of trust in people. I'm like, I'm just skeptical of everybody now. I'm skeptical of literally everyone. Literally everything I'm looking at, literally everything that I see coming out, it's... It, it feels like deja vu. Kylie Jenner has a matte neutrals eyeshadow palette. Like it's so boring. A matte palette, groundbreaking. Not her asking Mario to just sell his palette. One thing about Kylie Cosmetics is it's going to be boring, basic and overpriced. I'm shocked people are still buying into this brand. Honestly though, honestly though, it really is. It, it, like it, it, there are several Barbie things, several Barbie things that have come out that I don't feel like any of them really have truly captured uh, the magic of the movie coming up. There's a toothbrush? Barbie toothpaste? Oh my God. I will say, as excited as I am about seeing this movie, I am so excited for the Barbie movie. You have no idea. I'm so stoked. Um, I do think that the, the product placement in some of these is going a little bit overboard. I like, I saw that there was like a Krispy Kreme collaboration, but only in the Philippines. I was like, I want to try those donuts. I want a Barbie donut, but it's only in the Philippines. So a lot of, a lot of the Barbie things have gone a bit far. There's a candle, there's a toothbrush, there's everything. There are so many things that have, that has been a part of the marketing of this movie. The fact that they have like the actual Barbie dream house that you can go like rent as an airbnb is so crazy to me just thinking about how much money went into the marketing like i'm so stoked for it It looks really fun i i cannot wait to see ryan gosling in a comedic role again i think ryan gosling is so underappreciated as a comedic actor i'm so excited but yeah why is there an 80 dollar toothbrush an 80 dollar toothbrush but why is the 80 dollar toothbrush it's an 80 dollar toothbrush that's too many that's too many that's too much money. Other things like hair products and like hair ties and stuff, I can get, I get that. But oh my God, that's so much Barbie stuff. I dig so much of the things like the Barbie kind of like inspired clothing and like a lot of places are kind of pushing a lot of pink right now, which I love. I love it so much. The next video I'm gonna film is about like clothes and things where I get clothes. And so seeing a lot of the stores get inspired by Barbie, Here's the thing. 
there's a difference between Barbie inspired things, which you find a lot of smaller brands actually do a really good job at actually putting in that inspiration. There's a difference between that and then just like Barbie marketing, branding collaborations. There's a difference. I love Barbie inspired things, but I don't need all of the Barbie things, like the actual labeled Barbie things, you know? It's an interesting phenomenon. This is the most I've seen uh, as far as like marketing and branding for a movie in a very, very long time. For one single movie where they have spread across so many industries and so many different kinds of products that they have collaborated with. Most of the time when it's like Avengers or uh, like Harry Potter, it's like action figures or, you know, like little, little makeup palettes that are like really kid friendly and stuff. But this is the first time where I've seen a movie that was like definitely made for grownups, but also like went so hard on the marketing. And they're doing a good job. I will I will give them that. They're doing a fantastic job at doing it because I want to see this movie so bad, but um, I don't want to see it so bad because of all of the products that they've released, you know? The fact that just Margot Robbie has gone to every single red carpet in like different Barbie outfits already has done so much for the marketing on this movie. Um, so I don't feel like they need to keep going with all these crazy collaborations, like an $80 toothbrush. What? That's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, it wasn't a super long one, I don't think. I don't know how long I've been recording. 36 minutes? That's not too bad. Um, but for today's song of the day, we have a theme. Uh, we have the first OP from season two of Jujutsu Kaisen, which is, is it where the blue is? Where your blue is? Where our blue is? Yeah, the opening theme song for the new season of Jujutsu Kaisen that just started last week and I'm so freaking excited. I'm gonna watch both the dub and the sub because I love both casts. Megumi, but I think everybody else I just love equally. I love all of them. The voice cast is so good regardless. But Where Our Blue Is by Tatsuya Kitani is the opening theme song and it is so good and I listened to it so much yesterday and the day before and I haven't stopped listening to it. So definitely go listen to the song. Definitely go check out the anime if you haven't seen it before. It's one of my favorites. Um, easily top five. Probably top three if I'm being serious. Lots of toys. Lots of here's here, here here's here's a little guys here's the little guys aren't they cute definitely go check out the song definitely go watch jujutsu kaisen if you haven't already um i started watching it because of uh people here on youtube and on twitter told me to watch it and i am so grateful that you did two years ago because oh my god i love it so much um, i'm wearing a shirt from it and confused my boss is that a boy band not really. If you would like to watch any of my other anti hauls, links to that will be down in the description below. And I hope you guys are having a good day. If you want to follow me on any of my other social media, my Instagram and my Twitter are both Abra's07, and then my TikTok and my Twitch are Abra's without the 07. Um, so if you want to follow me on any of those places, you can. Um, I'm not getting a threads yet because I'm going to see if people actually use it for longer than a week because I do not like early adopting things unless I know that people are gonna stick around for it because I don't like having accounts that I'm never gonna use. Never got a Pinterest and I never wanted one. Uh, thanks for watching everybody and I will see you all in the next video.